everyone, welcome to The Storyist. Discrimination against someone's race is something that we don't tolerate. Not only because it's what they tell us in books and social media, but because it is what's humanly right. Caring for other people not only means caring for those who look like you, but also having a concern for others who look opposite to you, who has a different race as you, or who came from a different culture as you did. Today, a racist teacher in a Catholic school learns this very important lesson as this is a story about a black student who calls out a racist professor in front of everyone in school. Stay until the end of the video to find out what happens. Angelo is a black student who goes to a Catholic school nearby his house. His parents and his whole family, even going back to his great-grandparents, are all Catholics. That is why his parents do not want him to break their tradition of making each and every generation in their family enter a Catholic school. Despite his race, Angelo rarely experiences discrimination inside his school. He thinks that perhaps it is also one advantage of being in such a school. Almost everyone respects each other's differences. Angelo is so thankful about that, because unlike other black kids who are going into American schools, he definitely has it lucky. Angelo is a very hardworking boy. He always goes to school and never skips any classes as much as possible. Since the school is near his house, he also willingly volunteers for school event preparations and other extracurricular activities, not because of the grades, but because he really loves helping out in the school. Because of this, he is known to the faculty as the bright and industrious boy. All the teachers in the faculty love him for his kindness, and a lot of his classmates adore him too because he always loves to help. Meanwhile, Eric, a New Yorker man who just lost his teaching job in the city, arrives in New Jersey. He used to be a high school teacher in New York, but he punished one of his students a little too hard than what the school allows. So he was fired from his job. He still believes that what he did to his former student was just a form of discipline, and he is still confused on why the school sided with the students and not him. Either way, he holds a grudge against the school that kicked him out, and he plans on building an image so reputable that his old school will beg on their knees for him to go back. Eric is silently smiling at his thoughts. He picks up his bag and walks toward the new school he will be teaching in. The entrance of the school already gave him a bad aura. He feels like the school is not too Catholic as they claim to be. As he enters, he sees a group of black students playing outside. He feels a strange chill run down his spine. How can this Catholic school have a lot of black kids? What a shame, Eric thinks to himself. He lets out a sigh of disgust as he walks past through the group of black kids minding their own business. As he enters his first class, he becomes more disappointed to learn that he has a black student in his class. He stands out brightly in the crowd, and it makes Eric's eyes sore. He feels like he is being blinded by his color that stands out among a field of white. He tries his best not to look at him. Eric starts the class fairly well. He introduces himself to the class, and they are all prim and proper. Hi everyone, I'm Eric, and I will be teaching world literature this semester, he commences. The students are all ears, and there is only one student he sees writing down on his notes. It is Angelo, the black student sitting in the middle row. This pisses Eric off. Um, excuse me, black kid in the middle row, eyes on me please, he says in a monotone. This catches Angelo's attention and he lifts his chin up from writing. Oh, I was just jotting things down, sir, Angelo politely answers. But this pisses Eric off more. His facial expression suddenly changes from friendly to authoritative. I haven't said anything for you to write down yet. Are you seriously disobeying me on my first day? Eric harshly says. His pitch is starting to get higher. Angelo does not want any commotion to happen, so he just closes his notebook and apologizes to his teacher. Eric, however, does not honor this apology, and he just shrugs him back to his chair and continues talking to the class. After that session, Angelo does his usual routine. He goes to the faculty room to ask the teachers there how he can be of help. As he knocks on the door, he spots Eric talking to the teachers. He continues walking and he asks all the teachers in the faculty if they need any help. Like clockwork, the teachers start giving him some papers to be photocopied. Then he walks out, but before he closes the door, he hears Eric say something to the teachers. So that kid is like a janitor here? Just with papers and for free? He says sarcastically. None of the teachers laugh with him. And when he notices this, he adds to his statement. Let's face it, 
You were all using him to do things for you to your advantage. And that's completely okay. I mean, slavery on black people dates back to the ancient times. No big deal. He continues saying, He thinks that his new colleagues will find his joke funny, but it turns out they find it offensive and inappropriate. Eric is so confused why his colleagues act that way, but he just shrugs it. Meanwhile, Angelo is silently crying behind the door. Hearing this makes him remember all of the discrimination he had experienced growing up that he thought he will never go through again inside their Catholic school. Despite what he heard, Angelo does what his teachers ask him to, and he comes back to the faculty room like nothing happened. While walking inside the faculty room, he can feel the side glances of Eric, and he knows too early that he will be grappling this semester to pass in world literature. The following day, Eric is teaching the class about French realism, and as it is Angelo's favorite genre of books, he has been answering a lot of Eric's questions. However, no matter how hard Angelo tries to raise his hand and get noticed, Eric deliberately does not interact with him. Yet, after a few moments, Eric gets pissed off seeing Angelo's dark arm raising nonstop, so he decides to call him out. I don't need your opinion on French realism, Angelo, he says. His classmates immediately fall silent as Eric uses his angry voice. But I just want to share some of my ideas to the class, Angelo replies politely. But Eric takes this as disrespectful. He scolds Angelo for talking back to him. Angelo tries to tell him that he is just explaining his side. What do you think a black kid like you knows about French realism? Or even about books in general? Eric insults. Angelo does not let this get to his nerves. I don't think my race and my color has anything to do with my intelligence, sir. If anything, it makes me proud. And that's why I am confident enough to share my thoughts. Angelo calmly says. Eric raises his voice even higher as Angelo speaks back. He orders him to go to the school principal to receive punishments for his actions. However, what transpires inside the principal's office is not what Eric had expected. Eric, we teach our kids here to be compassionate about others, no matter what size, shape, or color they are presented. If you care enough for the white students in your class, then you should care just enough for Angelo, because caring for someone does not look at one's physical appearance, the principal tells Eric. Hearing this, Eric gets more disappointed. He can't accept the fact that he is wrong. More so, he can't fathom the reality that the school has sided with the student once again. He feels disrespected and he feels betrayed. So he tells the principal why he thinks Angelo does not deserve to go to their school. There are a thousand other white people who deserve Angelo's life and I pity them. He reasons out. But his reason is not strong enough to kick out a student just because of being black. When the principal hears his side, she does not hesitate to fire him again just like how his former school at New York did. Eric leaves the school full-handed with all his things, on the second day of teaching. He may not have learned his lesson the first time around, but he sure did the second time. And no, all he feels is regret for misjudging Angelo because of his race. That's all for today. We hope you enjoyed that story, and we will see you on the next.